So today you're visiting Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences, and we're in Midcoast, Maine. And then if you zero in here at the end of the Damariscotta River, that's where our facility is. And at Bigelow, we have over 100 people on staff. 20 of those are senior scientists like me, and then dozens and others, dozens of other scientists work on these projects. In fact, all of the research that we're talking about today is a result of team science. So that means we have senior scientists, postdoctoral scholars, technicians, and graduate students that all come together to make the work happen. My name is Nicole Price. I'm a senior research scientist at the Bigelow Lab for Ocean Sciences, and I also direct our Center for Seafood Solutions. And my interest is in all things seaweed, really, um, particularly with respect to seaweed aquaculture. I've loved seaweeds all my life, and especially when I was getting my PhD or going to graduate school, I started thinking a lot about how seaweeds will change in the world as climate change is affecting our oceans. Particularly, I was thinking about how seaweeds respond to warming waters and changing seawater acidity. There's a couple of fun facts about seaweeds. There's one seaweed, it's that big, it's a circle, but the whole thing is just one cell. And then there's another seaweed that grows in these sheets, and you wouldn't believe it, but it's just one cell layer thick. And then finally, there are some seaweeds that start out microscopic. You can barely see them. And months later, they're meters and meters long, longer than your classroom probably. And the rate that they grow is just unparalleled by anything else on this planet. There are 20 senior scientists like me at Bigelow, and there's many of us who think about seaweeds. Some are thinking about seaweeds, natural populations or wild populations in the oceans and how well they're faring. And others are thinking about how to make products out of seaweeds to be nutritional food products or even animal feed products. And then finally, others are trying to figure out ways to um, create a seed catalog for seaweeds so that any farmer can get started if they want to. The oceans play a really important role in the carbon cycle. The ocean is actually a big sponge for all that carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere. And as it diffuses or comes from the gas phase in the air to the aqueous phase in seawater, it contributes to the life cycles of many organisms that live therein. So for instance, seaweeds are very good at sucking up carbon dioxide as part of their growing process. A really basic fundamental research question is how much carbon do seaweeds take up as they photosynthesize? And we can use an experimental system like this to answer that question. So we can bubble in extra amounts of CO2 to see how much carbon dioxide they're able to take up under different light conditions or under different temperature conditions. And then once the seaweeds get large, full grown size, which is even longer than me, we can start to use big aquariums like this to figure out how long they hold on to that carbon, when they start to die off or senesce like the leaves in the fall, what happens to that carbon as it drops to the sea floor. So once the seaweed is ready to die off or finish its life cycle, the question is what happens to that tissue? There's a couple of things that could happen. A fish or a sea urchin could eat that seaweed and then they breathe out just like you and me and that carbon dioxide makes its way back to the atmosphere. Or the tiny pieces of seaweed tissue could fall to the sea floor and get buried in the deep sediments there. Then effectively the carbon is removed from the global carbon cycle. And that is a process that can help us fight climate change. So another way that seaweed might be able to help with climate change other than carbon sequestration is thinking about using a seaweed product to reduce greenhouse gases in other supply chains. One example is using seaweed as an animal feed, particularly for dairy cows. Dairy cows burp out a lot of methane when they eat. That methane is pretty bad as a greenhouse gas. It's 30 times worse than carbon dioxide that we just talked about. So anything we can do to reduce methane gas is really exciting. 
In order to do this research at Bigelow, we use our experimental bottle herd. So our bottle herd is just pretend cow stomachs. And we take fluid out of the cow's stomach and put it into this bottle and feed it its hay and a little bit of seaweed to see if we can get the amount of methane that burps out of it to be less and less. And this research is really exciting because we are finding you can reduce that methane by a lot, almost get rid of it entirely, which means that we can find better ways to make milk that's better for the environment. Believe it or not, cows do like to eat seaweed. In Ireland, they'll go down to the shores and just graze in the intertidal area or on the beach to eat seaweed because it has things like salts and iodine that they really like to have in their diet. Right now, cows are eating species like rockweed, and we're trying to figure out how much they might like sugar kelp or Irish sea moss. So Bigelow also has a repository or a big storage center for thousands of algal strains, including some of the macroalgal species that were, or seaweed species we're thinking about for our research program. And half of these strains of seaweed are stored in deep freeze situations. So we have our cryogenic facility here where we keep our phytoplankton and our spores of seaweed stored in very cold conditions. So here we're standing in one of the cultivation rooms for the National Center for Marine Microbiota and Microalgae, or otherwise known as phytoplankton. These guys are really the base of the food web in an ocean system. And we're standing next to some cultures that we have going for experimental purposes. My favorite way to eat seaweed is in a sushi roll or um, sprinkled on top of my rice. And I'm starting to really like some of the new fermented seaweed products. My kids love seaweed snacks. And I hope you guys find some ways to include seaweed in your daily diet. I think we have a lot yet to explore about how we can use seaweed to feed our growing population on this planet. You might not know it, but you already eat a lot of seaweed. It's in your toothpaste and it's in your ice cream. But there's so many other ways we can think about seaweed in terms of pharmaceuticals, medicines, or um, other ways to improve human health. And it can also help improve the health of the planet through its effects on climate mitigation. So I'm just really excited to see what we can discover next about seaweeds.